Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve asteroid collision. So we're given an array of asteroids and each asteroid is an integer, right? So, so if the asteroid is positive, that means the asteroid is moving to the right. If the asteroid is negative, that means it's moving to the left. So that makes sense so far. And the absolute value of the asteroid represents the size of it. And so basically each asteroid is moving at the exact same speed and we'll see why that's important in a second. So there are a few rules for these asteroids. We want to find out the state of the asteroids after all collisions have been finished. And if so, if any two asteroids meet each other, that means the smaller one is going to explode. So the smaller one is going to be removed from the array. If both of them are the exact same size, then both of them are going to explode, meaning both of them are going to be removed from the array. But how do we actually know if the asteroids are going to collide? Well, that's where the same speed comes in. So if, if one asteroid is moving to the right and another asteroid is moving to the left, then they're definitely going to collide. But if two asteroids are moving in the exact same direction, right? I have two asteroids, let's say, are both moving to the right. Since they're moving at the exact same speed, they're never going to collide, right? So it makes a little more sense when you actually look at an example. So let's say this is our example. We have a 5, a 10, and a negative 5. So what does this actually represent? Well, it means, so basically the 5 is positive, right? That means it's moving to the right. And the 5 represents that the size of this asteroid is 5. We also have a 10 and it's positive, so that means it's also moving to the right, but this one's 10, so it's actually a little bigger than this asteroid. But we have a negative five that comes right after it. So that negative five asteroid, since it's negative, means it's moving to the left. So what's gonna happen with these asteroids? Are there gonna be any collisions? Clearly, these two asteroids are about to collide, right? We don't really care what time they collide or anything like that. They're moving at the exact same speed in opposite directions towards each other, so they're going to collide. Now, which one of these is going to be destroyed? Which one's going to explode? Well, the magnitude of this is 5 and the magnitude of this is 10, right? So this one is going to be destroyed. This asteroid is going to be destroyed, so the remaining array is going to be 5 and 10, right? But what about 5 and 10? Are they ever going to collide with each other? Clearly, they're both moving to the right, so they're not going to collide with each other. So, all in all, when you take a look at the output array, all we have to do is remove negative 5, so the output is going to be 5 and 10. So let's just try iterating through the array, right? Let's say this is our input array. Let's start at the leftmost spot and then just start iterating through it and deciding which, uh, which asteroids we're going to keep and which ones are going to collide with each other. And you'll find that using a stack data structure is going to be the most optimal way to solve it. Let me show you why. So let's say we have the first one, negative one, right? Clearly this asteroid is moving to the left because it's negative and think about it, any asteroid that comes after it, whether it's moving to the left or moving to the right, nothing is ever going to collide with this negative one now, right? Because all asteroids are moving at the same speed. This is the leftmost asteroid and it happens to be moving to the left. Nothing is ever going to collide with it now. Now, if it was moving to the right, it would be possible that another asteroid could be coming towards it, right? And in that case, there could be a collision. But in this case, there's just not a collision. Let's go ahead and add that to our stack now, right? Negative one added to the stack. Next, let's look at three. So this asteroid is moving to the right, right? And the, the most recent asteroid that we added was moving to the left. So clearly there's not going to be a collision between these two asteroids, right? So let's take this three and also add it to our stack. Now let's look at the next value two. So the two is also moving to the right because it's positive. The previous uh, asteroid was also moving to the right. So there's no need for a collision, right? So we can take this two, add it to our stack. 
Now we get to another node that happens to be negative, and negative means it's moving to the left, right? Okay, what about the previous node that we just added? Let's look at the top of our stack, see what direction is that moving? Okay, it's two, that means the two is moving to the right, so clearly there's gonna be a collision now, right? These two asteroids are gonna collide. So we're comparing two to negative three, right? And really we want the absolute value of this, right? Which is gonna be three, right? Absolute value of negative three is equal to three. So we compare this two with positive three, right? So since three is greater than two, that means the three is gonna win, right? So that means we have to destroy two. How are we gonna destroy two? How are we gonna handle it with our code? Well, what we're gonna do is take this positive two and remove it from our stack, meaning we're popping from the stack, right? We're popping from the top of the stack, which we know is an O of one operation. Okay, so based on that, now we're done, right? We can add the negative three to the top of the stack. Not quite, right? You have to remember the case, there could be multiple collisions, right? So this two has been removed, but what about this three that we added to the stack previously? Well, that three is moving to the right, the negative three is moving to the left. So actually these asteroids are gonna collide as well. And in this case, the absolute value of negative three is equal to three, and that's actually the asteroid it's gonna collide with three as well, right? So three is equal. So what's gonna happen when they're both equal? In that case, actually, both of the asteroids are going to be destroyed. So what does that mean? That means that this three we were going to add, we can no longer add it to our stack, and that also means that this three that was already added has to also be removed now. And now, since the, our array is finished, right, we have no more elements to add, this is going to be the output, right? So our, our, our finished asteroids are just gonna be a single negative one and the rest is going to be empty, right? This is the output. This is what the asteroids look like after all collisions have been completed. And by the way, you might have noticed that a collision only happens in the case where the most, where the element we're adding, right? The asteroid happens to be negative. So asteroid is less than zero. And the top of our stack, which I'm gonna call stack at index negative one, is greater than zero, right? So if they're in opposite directions and the most recent one is negative and the top of the stack is positive, only then do we have a collision. And one last thing, we can decide how a collision is going to be finished by taking the two uh, asteroids that are colliding and adding them together. So if two and negative three were colliding, we'd take two plus negative three, we'd get an output of negative one. What that means is that the negative asteroid is gonna win, right? If we had, if we had positive three plus negative three, then we get zero, right? That means both of the asteroids are going to be destroyed. Now, the other case would be, let's say hypothetically, this value in our input was a four, a positive four, which we didn't end up seeing, but if it was, we'd get four plus negative three, which is gonna be positive one. And that means that the right asteroid is going to be destroyed, but the left asteroid is not going to be destroyed because this is positive, right? So that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do in the code. And the code is actually pretty simple once you understand how to use this stack. And by the way, since we're only adding an element and removing it from the stack once, right? So O of one plus O of one, and we're doing that for every single element in the input array, which could be size N, the overall time complexity is gonna be big O of N, and the memory comp complexity is going to be the exact same. Okay, so first thing we do is declare our stack, which is also going to be the result, right? Because the remaining asteroids are going to be returned. Then what we want to do is go through every single asteroid in the input. And then we want to start doing the collisions. But remember, we can only do collisions if the stack is non-empty, meaning there's a asteroid inside of the stack. And the current asteroid we're visiting is negative, meaning it's moving to the left. And the asteroid on the top of the stack is positive, meaning it's moving to the right. If all of these are true, that means we're definitely about to have a collision. 
Now, how do we know the result of the of the collision? Well, I'm going to store that in a variable diff. I'm going to take the asteroid A, add it to the asteroid at the top of the stack, right? And remember, if the diff or the asteroids added together happens to be negative, that means the asteroid A is going to win. So what we can do is take the top of the stack and pop it. Now, if the diff was positive, meaning it's greater than zero, that means the top of the stack is going to win. That means A is going to be destroyed. So how can I basically accomplish destroying A? Well, I'm going to set it to zero because they guarantee us that no asteroid in the input is going to be zero. So if I set this to zero, then we're definitely not going to add it to the stack. Later on, I'll show you why that's true. And if we set this to zero, this loop is going to stop executing, right? Because this condition is no longer going to be true. Now, the third case that you don't want to forget about, I always forget about it, is what if A is equal to the top of the stack? That means both are going to be destroyed. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do both of the things that we just did up here. We're going to set A to zero and we're going to pop from the top of the stack. We're destroying both of the asteroids. And basically, once this loop is done executing, we have destroyed all the asteroids that we can so far. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a and append it to our stack right but remember we could have possibly set a to zero so if we did set it to zero we want to make sure that there's a condition so only if a is still positive or even negative only then are we going to add it to the stack if it's zero we're not going to add it and after we've done this, we've gone through every asteroid, added the ones that we could could possibly add and destroyed the asteroids that we could destroy. Then all we have to do is return whatever is left in the stack, and that's going to be the remaining asteroids. So you can see it's a very efficient algorithm because it's a linear time algorithm when you use the stack data structure. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.